The Honourable the Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, forgive me, I've never seen this place so quiet. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Speaker, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, thank the people of Humber Gross Morn for electing me as a representative in this legislature. It's been a busy session of robust discussion and debate for members of the House. And the COVID-19 global pandemic has touched every family, community, business in our province and indeed around the world. As honourable members of this House of Assembly, during the fall sitting, we came together to discuss legislation that supports the socioeconomic well-being of all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians as we collectively, as a group, face the global pandemic and economic crisis. In this climate, our government is investing hundreds of millions of dollars to make our province the best possible place to live and create new, sustainable jobs for the futures of our families. Investments in such things as childcare, infrastructure, and businesses all contribute to a better quality of life and a stronger economy. In this session, we successfully passed Budget 2020. And Mr. Speaker, may I add the first budget for Newfoundland and Labrador during a global pandemic. At its core, it maintains the principles of ensuring every taxpayer's dollar is closely scrutinized, accounted for, and used prudently to its full potential. Some key actions in Budget 2020 included $25 day childcare in 2021 that will allow more parents to participate in the workplace and lead to more positive learning experiences for our most valuable asset, our children. $30 million for small businesses and community organizations to offset expenses incurred by the pandemic. And more than $600 million for infrastructure projects that will improve access to services and create new jobs for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Increased investments in the arts community, $2.1 million to advance our goal to welcome more than 2,500 new permanent residents to this province by 2022. And close to $100 million being available to respond to demands for such things as PPE, testing, and mobilizing efforts to support immunization in the event, and there will be an event, of a COVID-19 vaccine. We brought forward legislation that will make it easier and safer for businesses to conduct business amidst the current COVID-19 pandemic. And new legislation that creates equity in the province's accommodation industry. For the Leader of the Opposition, I applaud you, sir, your caucus, for taking time to analyze our budget, critique it in the legislation for this province. Well done. To the Leader of the Third Party, likewise, I truly appreciate your perspective and the full knowledge that you bring to the table in the wholesome debate. Also, even though they're not here, I'll recognize the independent members. I thank them for sharing their opinions. They're always welcomed when representing their constituents. And so I take this time to thank everyone for their steadfast commitment during this difficult session. We all recognize, as elected officials in this honorable house, we are here to serve the people of Newfoundland and Labrador, and we never should lose sight of that. Thank you all to the staff of the clerk's office and all the House of Assembly staff, so many hardworking people keeping everything going behind the scenes and wearing many different hats during this particular difficult time of COVID-19. To the legislature, the library, Hansard, and the broadcast team, the table officers, and the sergeants of our, sergeant of arms, thank you. To the security guards who are here day in, day out, serving the building, we greet you every day to public servants and political staff everywhere in our constituencies and here in the buildings. Thank you very much. You have all gone well beyond this session as we safely navigate the new normal life of COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, to your own staff working countless hours behind the scenes to ensure we're prepared for the House during these sessions. I want to thank them all for the work they do. I'll finish up by thanking thanking Mr. Speaker and the people of the province for affording us this honorable privilege to sit here what is indeed during not generational times, but historic times. Over the years, I have had the pleasure of visiting a number of beautiful communities in our spectacular province, from Nain right down to the boot of the Buren Peninsula and every place in between. Think about the people I've connected with, hardworking, resilient, proud Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, you're why I'm so honored to be here representing you all as the 14th Premier in this legislature. We are all here, 
each and every one of us sit here every day reflecting on the importance of this province, the undefeatable people, and its undeniable future. In my short time in office, our government has secured $320 million from Ottawa to help support the hard-working families in the oil and gas industry. We are enlisting experienced teams, the best and the brightest, to look at reimagining the economy, health care, and how to best navigate the oil and gas industry in what's arguably its most tumultuous time. Rest assured, our government is committed to building a bright, prosperous future for all Newfoundland and Labradorians. Because I believe together, each and every one of us and the constituents that we represent will emerge from this pandemic and this global economic crisis, a stronger, more caring, more compassionate, and more diverse society and economy that will represent the future generations of Newfoundland and Labrador. So thank you very much. I hope everyone takes a moment to safely honor our veterans and their loved ones on this Remembrance Day.